We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are Amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are Amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. The Hey, this is Travis. And this is Mike. And we are the Beer Amigos! It's August 8th, 2015. We're at the Calverton Lynx for the North Fork Craft Beer Festival presented by Starfish Junction Productions. And we're going to do a bunch of interviews. Mike is the interview man. Yeah, Travis is just sexy as hell, but yeah, I, pre- I, pre- I press record and just try to smile. Well, we're here. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing some friends we haven't seen in a while. We're looking forward to meet some new people. Let's get to those interviews. Stay tuned. We are here with Jimmy from the Brooklyn Brewery. He is a brewer at the facility. Yes. And um, we're going to talk to him about a couple of uh, the 750 formatted beers that they offer. Uh, that, that are delicious. One is available now. One is to be available in the semi-near future. Uh, the first one is the Creek Beer. Um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about that beer, Jimmy. Yeah, so K is for Creek is uh, um, a recent release from our Brooklyn Quarterly Experiment range, uh, the BQEs. Uh, it's sort of a Brooklyn take on a traditional Belgian Creek. So we started off with uh, a base beer similar to Local 2, which is a dark Abbey-style ale. Uh, we racked it uh, into bourbon barrels, mostly Four Roses bourbon barrels, with about 20 pounds of fresh cherries in every barrel. Let it sit for about six months, let it do its thing. The cherries were fresh, and so they had some fun is going on with them as well and then we racked them out bottled it up with a little bit of champagne yeast to get a nice effervescent carbonation mouthfeel but then also some Britannomyces yeast and uh, which you know isn't regular brewer's yeast for those of you who don't know it's a wild strain of yeast uh, uh, commonly referred to as just Brett and uh, and so then we let it actually sit for about maybe like three to six months before we actually sent it out and released it so that the Brett was able to do its thing before it made its way onto the shelves uh, and that was you know a little while ago so the bread you know I'm drinking it right now it's actually in my hand y'all can't see this but the bread is really starting to come in pretty strong right now and it's some fantastic lovely stuff really tart the cherries pop uh, it's about 10.1% alcohol and just some beautiful stuff and it's really going to age very nicely those uh, uh, that bread yeast is still in there it's still live and it's going to keep doing its thing for as long as it's can for as long as it can yeah. Live beer, Mike. We're actually drinking this beer right now, and, and Travis and I had a sip prior to even uh, interviewing Jimmy, and I was really like, wow, the the aromatics and nose on this beer is ridiculous. Like, it's just super, like, sweet and sexy as hell. <laughs> yeah, like, we're on our second pour. We're like, right on the front, you get the tartness of the cherries, but then, like, the vanilla from the bourbon and a little bit of booziness kind of, like, waves its way through yeah. a little bit later on. Really, really nice Excellent. Stuff. I actually looked at Trav and was like, man, I really like this beer's, like, perfectly carbonated, and you can definitely get the champagne, like, uh, you know, profile on your tongue without a doubt. So, this beer's tight and is a really great summer beer so definitely find a bottle of this before the summer wraps up i usually think of creeks and like you know and and beers like that like for christmas but this is digging for summer it's really good for summer too yeah yeah with with the the cherry the cherry factor without a doubt uh find a bottle of this and do it dirty pucker up (laughs) (laughs) because because it's incredibly delicious yeah um we'll talk about another beer that uh, brooklyn happens to be pouring today um which is the imperial coffee porter i apologize yeah the intensified coffee porter icp (laughs) yeah um but in a good way but in a good way no 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 juggalo leave the juggalos (laughs) out of it (laughs) they want no part of this this is not a beer for the Juggalo. <laughs> no. uh, Jimmy, would you be kind enough to tell us about this awesome beer, which goes to market probably the tail end of this week, if not early next week? Yeah, the the, uh, the intensified coffee porter uh, was uh, took a while to do. It's got so many factors going on. So we, we first brewed up like a double porter. It came out of the fermenter already at like maybe nine and a half, ten percent alcohol. Really nice porter style ale. But our brewmaster Garrett Oliver, uh, who's such a world traveler, he went down to El Salvador. 
Salvador and met some good friends of him who uh, own a coffee plantation down there. Um, and they were talking about all the crazy coffees that they're making, that they're growing. Uh, and he hand-selected some. We had them shipped up to Brooklyn, roasted by a local company, Blue Bottle, who are fantastic coffee roasters. So they roasted the coffee. Um, and then it all came together. So the porter... Once it was done brewing, we put that into ex Woodford Reserve bourbon barrels to let age for a while. Once they were done aging, about six months later, we brought in the coffee, we cold brewed the coffee overnight, and then blended the two all together into the fermenters before we bottled it back up again. And it came out really, really nice. The cold brewing was fantastic. The coffee comes out nice and smooth and silky, not astringent, and just beautiful, beautiful stuff. So it's a little bit boozy. It's definitely got the vanilla from the bourbon again. It's got a nice coffee flavor. Uh, and, and, and then that, porty ro that porter roastiness too going on as well. Really big complex beer, 11.8%, but it doesn't taste like it. It's a bit dangerous, but it's good, good stuff. And I think Joe said there's only 40, maybe 40 cases coming to Long Island. Is that, was that what Joe said? I think in total, maybe. Oh, in like total. Yeah. It sounded... Oh, no, no, no. We did we did a lot more than 40 cases. Right. I don't know how many are coming out here. I can't okay. say. But no, no. We did we did about uh, 3,000 cases okay. total. But well, like three, a couple hundred are going abroad, you know. Okay. And yeah, yeah, This yeah. is definitely that beer. That's a, this is the beer to buy now and hold on to for the fall yeah. and winter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you see it, get it. Just get it. Going abroad because, I mean, we've talked about this with Joe, how Brook, uh, Brooklyn has a huge presence in the Swedish market. How... The, the Swedish love Brooklyn beer, and I don't they blame do. them. They know it's good. Um, but I uh, kind of, you know, going back for a second, uh, the cold brew uh, actually reduces the acidity in coffee. So, I mean, I'm sure that, that works really well with, the, you know, the barrel aging process that you're, you know, using the bourbon barrels. So the acidity, I'm sure, with it being reduced because it's cold brew, is just enhancing the flavor of the coffee without being... Well, it's it's what it does is it selects the flavors that we wanted. We didn't want the sharp, astringent flavors. We wanted the nice, smooth coffee flavors that you get out of cold brewing. And so that's that's the way we did it. And actually, our maintenance engineer, Pedro... What's up, Pedro? Hey, Pedro! Shout out to Pedro! <laughs> Pedro actually made this massive cold press because we cold we did about 70 pounds of coffee per, per batch. And we put in this big canister, and Pedro actually made a giant French press. He awesome. Welded it together, awesome. and we had, this thing was probably about two and a half feet in diameter. That we were then like rah, squeezing down the coffee with an, an actual like French press in the coffee. That, that way, it's hilarious. That's awesome because, like, I mean, especially with a you know brewery the size of of Brooklyn, you know, like you're a known brewer. Like, so you kind of see the artisanal side of it where, like, that's behind the scenes, man. No one sees that. They just see the, the final product. So, you know, it's the, the uh, not sexy part, but it's a huge integral part to the process. Oh, yeah. So that's really great, man. I'm, thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. You're welcome, guys. Anytime. <laughs> um, much love to the Brooklyn Brewery as always. Jimmy, thank you for your much time. Love to the beer amigos. Thank you so much, Jimmy. No worries, thanks. guys. Thanks. Take care. We are here with Bobby Rodriguez from Po' Boy Brewery. He's a Long Island upstart, but he's been in the game for quite some time. Um, you've definitely heard us talk about Mr. Bobby Rodriguez in the past. He's brewed stuff for our events, whether it be ciders, beers, other delightful refreshments of sorts. Bobby, correct me if I'm wrong, is this the first like, proper North Fork Craft Beer Festival that you're here as Po' Boy? <laughs> he's eating <laughs> Satan's asshole hot peppers right now. <laughs> All right, we might have to. We'll, we'll take a pause. And we are back. All right, Bobby's back. Bobby's a, a huge pepperhead, and uh, at this festival in particular, I feel like the guys really bring their hybrid peppers yeah, so they can up their pepper home. game, uh, whether it be in a jerky form or just straight up pepper. So Bobby's over here dying, but appreciating the integrity of the the pepper that he just consumed. Um, Bobby. Perhaps you could give us a little bit of insight in regards to the progression of your brewery and kind of where you are right now. I apologize. I was distracted for a moment. Wow. But it's phenomenal when you can grow your own peppers and enjoy them as well. Um, I guess I've been in the beer scene for a few years because I started with um, um, homebrew clubs. Uh, beer was one. Ally BME was the other. Uh, when I joined that club... I set my sights on some people that I thought made good beers, and you know, here's one of them that I set my sights on, Mike Napolitano. He's so hot. Yeah, he's yeah. so hot right now. He's hot because you know he ate peppers, and he's not bad looking either. Yeah. But that that being said, um, I looked at people like that that were making good beers, and I said I wanted to make beers as good as them. And then along the way, you know. 
went to a BGCP uh, uh, judging course, became a certified beer judge across the country, started entering my, competi uh, my beers in competition, and I did very well, and for like three straight years, I won the most competitions on Long Island for a while. Um, and for me, it was uh, more of an evolution, and why I'm doing this is not because this is a job, this is a hobby because I have a real job, and I'm just having fun with it. And I get a lot of times, what's your flagship beer? I don't have one. I make beers and I make hard ciders, and I will make pilsners to Belgians from straight ciders to crazy things like what I have today, like a vanilla cupcake cider, a key lime pie cider, um, a hibiscus berry cider. So I'm just having fun, you know, so, and that, that's what I'm doing. Bobby brews what Bobby wants to brew, and yeah. there's a certain amount of I respect that, man. Like, I mean, everything we've we've had from you has definitely been great. So, I mean, um, both Bobby was one of the first people to brew for the Beer Amigos. Oh, that's right. Yeah, on Long Island Craft Beer Week years ago. A little ago. champagne action oh, for us. That's key lime, right? Key lime. That's funny. Key lime pie had never done before, but about four years ago, I did the Long Island Craft Beer Week out of the Cortland. Did something for the Beer Amigos called Key Lime Pie Cider. And I have not made it again since this last three or four months. And um, the twist this time was, wow, I'm still salivating from that pepper. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I wanted to make it taste like pie instead of just key lime. So I get pie notes, crust notes, and stuff like that. So for me, it's very strange that I'm talking about this with the Beer Amigos. Because it, it brings me back to a time when I was still having fun, but, you know, maybe nobody knew about me or nobody cared about me. So maybe one day somebody will know about me and care about me. <laughs> and, and that goes back to Mike's original question before we got interrupted by Mike sticking something in your mouth. Well, yeah. Was, is this your first proper large-scale beer festival that you're pouring at? Um, I think the first large-scale probably was... Uh, NASA Coliseum, the International Beer Festival in November. I did something then, and then um, I did something out of the country corner in Setauket, which was the official release right. of Poe Boy, along with a beer that I won a competition with, and I brewed out of uh, Port Jeff Brewery called Imperial Force. So since then, it's been exploding. Yeah, and I've actually, I've not had Imperial Force, but I hear nothing but excellent stuff. What yeah. about you, Mike? I have neither, neither have I, but I mean, I've absolutely heard great things about that beer in particular. But I'm not surprised to hear that because we kind of know Bobby's history and um, like Travis alluded to and both Bobby, like that he made the Key Lime Cider, but he also made that the Candy Cane Champagne yes. Fest yes. for the Beer Amigos Winterfest. So, I mean, I Bobby's been great to us forever, so it's really great to see this happen for him um, in the form of Po' Boy Brewery. Yeah. So you can check him out on Po' Boy Brewery.com and all, all the regular spots. But regardless, Bobby's the man and we love him seriously. He's the best dude. And um, when is your stuff on tap at Taste of Long Island in Farmingdale? Well, after five months of brewing out of a shed space, I outgrew it. And because I'm so particular, I moved out and I'm opening up a place in Bohemia with a tasting room and real brewing equipment five barrels and I'll be making hard ciders and beer and I've established the place as a winery as well so I can do whatever I want and um, right now it's uh, we're in the middle so I would say look out for about November, December to come down and, and try some product at the tasting room. That sounds incredible. Yeah, I mean, we don't really do this, but I would love to impose and come and visit you because <laughs> yes. that's right in my neck of the woods and I really enjoy you as a dude and, <laughs> and also as a brewer. So uh, it would be great to stop by and check out what you're doing, Bobby. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thank you for at least caring to talk to me again. Of course, all the time. And thank you, Mike, for standing here and not contributing wait, at wait, all wait, to the Wait, 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 wait. You got at least here. I figured if I shut the hell up, no one would uh, get offended and still listen to your podcast. <laughs> thank you for burning the back of Bobby's throat. <laughs> thank you, guys. And I, I hope one day you guys come out. The brewery itself, for me, this is about passion. It's not about a business. I have a real job. And the beers and the ciders will always be very approachable to beer drinkers, cider drinker, cocktail drinkers, and for people that 
are like me, just a poor boy. Yeah, that's great. Thanks again, Bobby. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Hey, I'm Gene. I'm from Adirondack Brewery, and I'm hanging out at the North Fork Beer Festival with my homies, the Beer Amigos. Yeah! Where are we at, Mike? We're here with Charles from the 1940s Brewing Company, uh, brewing out of Long Island, like many other respectable gentlemen we've interviewed today. Um, Charles, maybe you can give, tell us a little bit about your brewery, um, kind of what, what you've been brewing and, and where you are presently. Well, presently we're located in Farmingdale at a place called A Taste of Long Island. We have a, our new double IPA out here today called I Slip You Fall. Uh, it's uh, set up to mimic the city and state uh, location that we're going to be moving to, which is in Bohemia in the town of Islip. Uh, we're opening up with Pool Boy Brewing Company, a new brewery, five-barrel system. We'll have eight beers on tap, each of us, or ciders, and we're looking forward to a great opportunity of bringing our beer to the next level on a more professional system. Which is great, because we just talked to Po' Boy, and I didn't know you guys were joining Po' Boy in the new location, so yeah, that's incredible. Absolutely. It's a great way to, to share a space, but also both be able to dilute, uh, excuse me, both be able to do what you like, love, and you know, want to bring to the scene and represent yourself with. Um, what are some of the beers that we could potentially expect to see from you? Well, we're going to, right now you'll see our double IPA. We have an IPA called Airfield that uh, has been out for a while. We have a new one coming out called Golden Riveter. It's a uh, Pilsner-style IPA. Uh, we also have our Bohemia Blonde, our, Cez our Cezanne, which is, we're having a contest today to name the Cezanne. And if someone wants to name it, what do we do? Write it on your Facebook page, email uh, it to you? Basically, it was a contest. You come up to the booth where we are, and you give us the name that you in, that thinks that you know will make it through the, not only the TTB but through all the others, so we don't conflict with anybody. Uh, we also have a uh, our English Pale Ale Arsenal. We're looking forward to bringing back our Hefeweizen, Hefe Injustice, uh, which will be coming out in the fall, uh, along with Orange Sunrise, which is our Rogan beer with a twist of orange to it. Uh, your Arsenal beer, is that supported by the Arsenal Football Club of the UK, or is that just uh, your own homage <laughs> by a name? I think we know that answer, Mike. <laughs> I think it's an homage to the name. Uh, that's the way we put it. Uh, and we're also looking to brew uh, a lager. I have a recipe for the old Bushwick-style lagers that were brewed by Schaefer, Rheingold, uh, Peels, all of the old breweries from New York. Uh, back in a time when my father was the assistant brewmaster for Wrangell. So I'm looking forward to getting into the new facility and being able to make lagers as well as regular ales. Yeah, it's great. It's great to be able to revisit old school recipes. Um, I mean, I know that, like, we discussed this earlier, and Travis and I kind of discuss this regularly. Like, my go-to beer when there's nothing else that I'm really, like, interested in is the, the Brooklyn lager, which is like a Prohibition-style lager. Right. Um, so that's great to see those beers, like being respected and giving the you know the proper limelight that they should be getting because they they played a huge role in the you know in the beer industry in general and and people's experiences in beer so that's awesome i'm really excited to see what you guys do i'm very happy to see that you're sharing a space with pool boy brewery and, as am i and bobby rodriguez who's been instrumental in participating in beer amigo events in the past and just being all around great dude and educator in the beer community so anytime um we see good people doing good things we're really you know like to support it so um so could... so are you actually on tap currently at taste of a long island yes we have three of our beers on tap at a taste of long island airfield ipa uh it's called summer ruckus the okay. saison is still there and our bohemia blonde okay what, what loca where's the location where it's uh, 211 a main street okay. in farmingdale it's just down from Croxley's and a little bit north of the Republic. Okay, wonderful. You can find out more on 1940s Brewing Company and, you know, the usual methods, guys. Come on. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Come Use on. the Internet. Come on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charles. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. We're here with Kevin and Mark from Lithology Brewing Company. Uh, pretty new to the scene on the, on the Long Island beer craft, ah, craft beer front. Guys, successful day at the North Fork Craft Beer Festival. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what you poured today. Yeah, uh, today we had uh, our Sunrise Summer Ale. We also had the LB IPA. 
and we brought a special variety of our of our IPA. It was a cask conditioned uh, version of that with Galaxy Australian Galaxy hops uh, as a dry hop. And it was from the same batch as the normal IPA, but we cast conditioned it. We had that cast ale. Yeah, definitely. Um, Good? Yeah, yes, I yes. definitely did enjoy it. Do you guys feel like you have a lot of momentum as a brewery post your successful Kickstarter endeavor? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about how, you know, I kind of came down to the wire a little bit. So, I mean, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the anxiety and then also the joy of the success. Yeah, it was a little stressful at first uh, when we kind of stalled out midway through. But uh, it kind of picked up. We, we, we talked to some other people who had successful Kickstarters in the brewing industry, and they kind of said, just wait it out. Wait out the stall. Towards the end, it picks up. So we waited, yeah, and we waited, and we waited, and then it part, started picking up. Yeah. So it uh, did well. It's not something that you want to do consistently, the Kickstarter. Like, you, you do it once, you freak out for like three months about it, and you hate yourself every day, and you say no one likes you, and this is terrible, this is like the worst idea ever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people keep giving you money, and you're like, this is great. Yeah. Everyone yeah. loved every, It's good to be successful. And then, uh, you know, you, you, we made it happen, and uh, here we are. And, and I think going forward now, you know, we took, that, we took those funds, and we really parlayed that into starting the brewery. Yeah. Into, into really kicking things off and, and trying to make, you know, the, the best beer possible at the, the facility yeah, that I mean, we're at. Because of that, we were able to acquire the bright tank we needed, the kegs we needed, the fermenters we needed, and now you can find us on tap in a lot of places throughout the metro area. Yeah, okay. we saw you at uh, Eat Gastro Pub yeah. in Oceanside about a month ago or yeah, so. Yeah, we're there. We'll be back. Uh, we're, we're on the lower, week. yeah, we're on the lower east, uh, in the lower east side at a place called Black Tree. Uh, we're at Eat Gastro Pub. In Farmingdale, obviously, there are our tasting room. We're always on tap there. Uh, in the village of Patchogue, we are on tap pretty consistently at the Village Idiot Pub. And uh, if, if you're familiar with Hoptron Brutique. Very much so. Yeah, they have a, a wonderful rotation of craft beer that is always cycling through there. And so we've been there before. We're going to be there again uh, in the very near future. Um, we hope to add to the uh, growing amount of bars and restaurants that we are serving. We're also on tap at the, uh, we're in, the, we're in Southampton or East Hampton? What is that considered? Southampton. Southampton, Southampton at a place called Roar Bar. It's, okay. a, it's a new place, just opened up. It's a, a mostly seafood restaurant. Um, we're also at uh, Cap Tree Cove restaurant of the Cap Tree fishing area. So if you're... Uh, if you're gone fishing for the day, you can if grab this there. If you feel salty, you could have it with a little yeah. algae yeah. beer. Are you, Absolutely. Are you guys self-delivery? Yeah, yeah. Total, total self-distribution. I mean, you know, we brew it, we bring it. Your brewer, the brewers are the salesmen. Yeah. Right? So yeah. We, we make it, we, we sell it. And we you pick drink the, it. You we drink pick it. the kegs up, we yeah. drink it, yeah, we it. clean it after, we make a mess. It's all you guys. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's all us. This is yeah. what you see is what you get. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Guys that more look like me and Travis, uh, just so you know, the sexiest guy in this conversation was talking about being very judgmental towards himself as he was questioning his ability to succeed in a Kickstarter campaign. So if you're feeling a little bit self-conscious, just know you're doing it right for yourself. <laughs> I never said I was self-conscious. I, don't know what you're talking I thought he was talking about me. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not even part of the brewing company. I'm like, who's the most <laughs> but you do, like, you do have to feel good in the sense of like just the growth you've had in a short period of time. You know, every time you add an account or, you know, whether it be through just someone you've met in the beer community network wise or just happens to be an account you gain just by stopping in and shooting the shit with a bartender or, or uh, you know, a, an owner of a... A lot of times the beer speaks for itself. I mean, we know a lot of people and we're very friendly, um, but sometimes we, you know, we bring a sample or two and someone drinks that and says, yep, yeah, I want that. So uh, it's very... What? Rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, rewarding. It, it, that, and that validating. You know, right, it, right. It That's makes, the word you know, I'm looking for. Yeah. You, you put yourself out there on a limb and you say, okay, we're going to start a brewery, we're going we're gonna to make beer, we think we make good beer, and then you put it out there and you... You hope that what you do right, is yeah. is good, right? You know, you of course, I can. Fe I feel like, of course, I can sell a thing I make, but uh, until you try it, that's really you know the, the taste is in the uh, in the taste. Yeah, and I feel like the success is evident in like the repeat clientele. Like if right, they just yeah. try it once and they're like, okay, we're good on that. Like come pick up your six to Like we don't yeah. want any more. Um, but the repeat factor is really a great thing, and the fact that you're developing these relationships with people that not only appreciate your beer but want to see you succeed uh, is, a, is a great, beautiful thing. Um, That's a, thanks. That's a really good point because we, we, we talk about it constantly. We want to build relationships. And, like, 
and, and not just a client, but friends and people who yeah. want who want us to it's be. It's not confident. just business. A right. Absolutely, it's not just about business. Yeah. Like we want to make gear, but we want to we want to more importantly make relationships with yeah. the, with our vendors. And we want to sell beer, but we also want to go there and meet the people drinking it and talk to them about it and and all that good stuff. Yeah, because I mean, whether it's like I mean, there's a multitude of styles that you guys brew. Every every brewery makes. So I mean, whether it's one beer that someone connects with or it's a different style of beer. Like I had your double IPA at. Cascales Festival, I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've had yeah, your I, a lot of type yeah, and I've had your brown ale before, which right. is an award-winning beer. That's right. um, <laughs> and they're both and they're both great <laughs> beers. So I mean, like for for me to be like this double IPA is solid. Like there's it's a style that a lot of people are making now. So for me to even be like this is worthy of me mentioning or right. sharing with someone like says a lot. So you should feel and good we, about that. And that's what uh, an event like today, uh, what pulls me to something like this is the ability to talk to people and tell them what we're doing and really discuss like what's the difference between the summer ale, the IPA, and then the, you know, the cask IPA that we brought. I mean, it, it's, I like the ability to reach out and let them know. And the feedback we get from people, uh, just you know, their, their knowledge of craft beer is, is really inspiring. Yeah. I mean, that absolutely makes sense, too, because a lot of people are not familiar with, like, firkin or cask ale beer, right, where right. they don't understand the freshness factor or the ability to, you know, like, wet hop it or dry hop it with something else to be yeah. like, wow, this is awesome. Like, right. yeah. I can do this minute thing. And it's essentially, like, uh -huh. I mean, there's not many people that are... I mean, there are people in the industry that are familiar with it, but, like, even, like, Randalling, like, you know, when you run something through the Randall and you, like, infuse a beer with something else, you're like, wow, this really changes the complexity and the, and the profile of this beer. Absolutely. So, I mean, that really gives you an opportunity to, like, say, like, okay, seasonally, it's summer, like, we're going to infuse this beer with... Watermelon. <laughs> yeah, for instance, or, or grapefruit or something yeah. that's, like, peaches because, like, we have great farms on Long Island. So it's yeah. like, why would you not yeah. use these incredibly out. fresh products yeah, that are made locally? You have to go out on a limb and kind of, you know, like, we brought a cascade to a summer to a summer event. Right, right, like, that's right. a little, it's a little weird. But, like, it, it went over really yeah. well. Like, everyone, you know, majority of people seem yeah. to really like it. And, you have to explain, like, you know, what a Cascal is and, and, like, why it is the way it is. But once you, you know, once you lay out there, you know, this is supposed to be the way that you're experiencing it, they're like, oh, yeah, no, this is... This is good. Thank you. Yeah. Right, right, right. But that's good because that's not something that everyone experiences. Like, there's a few establishments that have, like, they'll have a cask available on, like, a Friday or a right. Saturday because they know they do the volume and the support having that fresh beer. They're going to go through it. But aside from that, I mean, unless if you're familiar with that style or that, like, you know, that's not, if that's not available to you, you may not be familiar with it. So it gives you a good opportunity to try a beer in a different light or, you know, whether it be, like, texturally different or just, you know, that alters a multitude of things, not just flavor profile. Um, so it's really just impressive. And, nice. yeah, and I'm glad you guys brought that to it because it switches it up. And when you look at the grand scheme of things, um, no one else was – I didn't see anyone else pouring a cast condition – just beer, like, so one, and that was yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I mean, that, that's kind of that's kind of expected by them in the sense that, like, sure. if you go to their tasting room, that's like a common thing. Like, okay, we have this available on cask, and that's great. But like, but that's a testament to the that approach. I mean, like, they're always experimenting with what can we, what do we have that's great? Okay, how can we cask condition that, and let's see what we can get from that. Right. You know, and to bring something here and have it so well received, it was really validating. It was, it felt good. And I'm glad we were able to bring something else to uh, yeah. the event. Not only from, you know, not even only from... A tear the... just fell. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a conversation point because people are like, what is this vessel over here that, you know, is pouring beer? Yeah. That they may not even be familiar with the aesthetic of it or at least the presence of it. And so that sparked a lot of conversation, which is also... Another element uh, to this event that we want to bring is talk about what we're doing, yeah, talk about beer, yeah, and not just pour it, right. yeah, have yeah, them walk it, away. It's and that's easy it. to pour and just have them be like, all right, next up. Like, I yeah. mean, you can kind of get that anywhere. You can get that at the local sampling at X distributor on right, right, right. Tuesday. Yeah, and yeah Tuesday. It's it's for, between four and six. Year. <laughs> like, so, I mean, you got to set yourself apart, and, and yeah, yeah. the fact that you're passionate about it is translated to your consumer and just the right. attendee. And, yeah. Um, but we do appreciate your time and in interviewing with us, yeah, and uh, we wish you the absolute best going forward. 
Thank you. And uh, we look to drink more beer from Lithology. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, uh, cheers. Real quick, I could just say Mark's fly has been undone during this whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you've been looking at it the whole time. <laughs> and that was the best part of the interview. Yeah. Nah, just kidding. That, I, mean, that, I, did, I did it for the interview. I thought that would add an element of surprise. I thought you guys wanted that. That food truck's no longer open for business. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. He really, okay. he really wanted to know how he got the beans above the frank, but that's <laughs> for another episode. <laughs> Hi, it's Michelle from Miss Michelle's, and I'm here at the North Fork Craft Beer Festival with the Beer Amigos. Yeah! And that wraps up another very long overdue episode of the Beer Amigos. The Beer Amigos! We're very excited to be back. There, We got a lot of great love today and feedback from people that we're really happy to see Travis and I doing our thing. Um, definitely not as much as we'd like to be doing it um, by any means, but when we do do it, we do it with the same passion that we always want to deliver it with. So we just appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we look to bring you great things in the immediate future, uh, the very near future, and... That wraps up another North Fork Craft Beer Festival. It's been great hanging, Trav. It's been great meeting new friends. Yeah. Reigniting old friendships. And as always, a big thank you for you. Uh... Oh, hey, Matt. Hi. Hey, Matt. M- mustache, I ask you a question. Wait, is that how it goes? <laughs> mustache, I ask you a question. Mustache? I must ask you a question. I must ask you a question. Oh, <laughs> that's horrible. Um... Oh, if, God, it's Peter Tripp. He just tripped. Oh, nerd! He just tripped. He's like, damn it, Peter. It's like his textbook. It's movie. Peter Tripp from Homebrews and Hand Grenades. That's how he met his wife. Uh, he fell it. on her. I was like Jack <laughs> Tripper, but I was like Pete Tripper. <laughs> hey, Pete, remember when we interviewed you at the Cradle of Aviation and you were super drunk? Hammered. I was super duper <laughs> drunk. I was listening to it. I was like, oh, Lord. I was like, that took me like 30 minutes to edit that 30-minute interview. <laughs> I was like, my wife hates me. Totally. <laughs> so we're actually doing our goodbyes. So, uh, Pete, while you say goodbye. Goodbye. Matt, say goodbye. So long. Farewell. A feeder saying goodbye. There it is. So until next time. Adios, amigos. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Amigo